Chin strap. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all already know, man. Ready. We back. We back at it. Monday. We don't miss. It's also like podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast. Now over a hundred k on Instagram. So, Sheesh. 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 what's how do you? I don't want to do. I'll blow this fucking microphone. Out. <laughs> <laughs> man, your host Dusko, and I'm sitting with two amazing dudes. And came out again, our second home, San Diego. Thank nice. you to our guy, your social media guy, honestly, <laughs> the one and only Jose, baby. Hey. Appreciate it. Showing us the lifestyle, man. I know. <laughs> you know showing us the lifestyle, so we can have this. <laughs> you don't smell like roaches in here. Yeah, yeah, no. And sitting once again back on the mic, one of the one of my dudes, the one and only Topo. Dude. A.K.A. Chris, A.K.A. the guy that wears the best chanclas in the world. What? Well, not today, though. Not today. Actually, A.K.A. Shoot. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> off camera, bro. Off camera. Yeah. Chris, <laughs> A.K.A. Topo, baby. There Thank you for having me. And then behind in the settings, I have <laughs> DJ Dylan. I got the one and only Big Pepe over there too. Big chin hey. strap. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> Man. But okay, we've been already having conversations outside of the camera. And kind of just picking back off of what we were saying earlier, you know, a lot of people try to have that perfect camera moment, mm. but we've talked about it prior. Sometimes the, the best moments are the ones that weren't ever recorded or the best pictures were the ones that were never taken. 100%. But we had, I mean, what was it? At least an hour of conversation oh, yep. yeah. outside. But, you know, check, checking in, man. How, how are you guys feeling? Feeling good. Yeah, I'm just going off of what you said, um, a lot of people know us on social media and they only see us on social media, but I think a good indicator of, of a really good person is that when the cameras are off, you're the same exact person. Mm. And when we came together today, it was just authentic. It was organic. Mm. And we were talking about the same things we we're going to talk about today, Literally. but we we're talking about outside because we're really driven by purpose. Mm. And, I, and I love that. This is my first time meeting you yeah. and I'm like, we're Dang aligned, up. right? Yeah. We talked about energy and vibration. Yep. I was like, dude, we're aligned. This is meant to happen. We're supposed to be here. Yeah. So I appreciate Facts. you linking us up. Because yeah. he's been talking about Praying this for a while. For it. Yeah. Tried it, man. Exactly. Tried it <laughs> but you know Topo, man. Sometimes he comes out. I'd be popping up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's that part. Trying to put people <clears throat> in the same room that I know will align. Because mm. of what our purpose is. We're brought together and binded together. By something bigger than the superficial, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. something bigger than materialistic things. It's literally bonded by purpose, mm. bonded by our gift. We talk a lot yeah. about finding our purpose. Mm -hmm. you, you took a break not too long ago to rearrange and kind of like deep dive into yourself. So mm -hmm. it, I, I do want to put this on camera and talk about that because a lot of us like we get lost, bro. We get lost in the sauce. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, we get so caught up on what life is and trying to get to the next level and the next big thing. Mm -hmm. But for you, taking a step back from everything, like, how, what it, how do you do that? What, what's the outcome out of mm -hmm. it? You, you know, I think for me, it's like how I did a video about this the other day where a lot of times, like, especially now in today's society, we measure, like, our value and our success based on, like, social media metrics, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, if my stuff in real life isn't, you know, do, go, doing how it needs to be, like, that's that's what I need to prioritize, right? And for me, in this specific case was my business. I went through, like, a growth that I wasn't expecting and I wasn't ready for. So because of that, it's like, you know, f for the average person, it's like, ah, oh, he's falling off because he's not posting on social media. Oh. But in reality, like, I'm building the infrastructure so that what's paying me pays me even more. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I feel like a lot of it has to do with, with, Again, going back towards like the society aspect of things, I don't measure my value or my worth based on those metrics. So I had to realize that, you know, I've been given an opportunity that I dreamed about my entire life about being in this position. So it's like I can't let that go to waste just because I'm worried about 
you know, people watching me on social media or on the gram, you know. How do you how do you guys get to <clears throat> get to the level of serving your purpose? Mm -hmm. Like, is there do you <clears throat> think there's a a book of of getting here? So the way I look at it, we have like a thousand different <clears throat> Voices in our head, conditioning, what we talked about earlier, mm. conditioning from the things that we've been through. Yeah. Those voices are there to, one, either protect us or guide us in the wrong direction. Mm. So it's the things that people taught us. Yeah. We have to quiet those voices down to find out exactly what we need to do in our life because I feel like our higher self always has the answer. And if mm. we can't hear it, we won't know. Mm. So I think the biggest answer for that is you have to be by yourself sometimes. Mm. You have to be isolated. You have to be able to hear that inner voice that's telling you exactly what you need to do with your life. Yeah. Because I didn't know what I was doing. I was just kind of letting people guide me in different directions in my life until I actually sat back, went through some shit, and then I sat with my own mind and I sift through the bullshit that was like all these thousand different voices telling me that, one, I wasn't good enough, mm. or two, I didn't deserve the manifestations that I wanted. Or the money that was coming in. Mm. And I was able to quiet those voices. And then the purpose came in. Mm. Who am I really? Excellent. Who am I the actual person that's going to make a difference in this world? And that's when I solidified myself. Mm. And then after that, opportunities just come. Yeah. And, they, right? yeah. and, and it gets scary too, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like that's the biggest struggle too for a lot of people is like having to really sit down yeah. and it's scary. really look at themselves in the mirror and say, I don't like this version of you. I don't like this version of myself. I don't... You got to change this. Like, this is the reason why you're not where you want to be or whatever your specific battle might be, right? Yeah. But, again, taking the time to just kind of quiet down, really listen, pay attention to what your mind really wants to, like, mm -hmm. experience and is aligning you towards, right? And, again, but it's a I, challenge, but... But how do you make that... How do you know when to make that time? We're so much on the go. Everybody that's, right. that's listening right now, whether they're driving sitting in the comfort of their home or whatever they're doing. Thank you guys for listening. But how do you, how do you stop to take that time to re reamp yourself and really get to why you're feeling this way? Why are you, why do you feel every day that you're not worthy? Why do you feel every day that you're not enough? Mm -hmm. How do you take a break from being on the go because you know you need to provide to, I got to be a little bit selfish. And to be honest, it's when everything fucking falls apart. <sighs> Facts. It's because God is aligning you for something better, so he destroys everything so you can build a foundation for something else. Mm -hmm. And those are the moments that you find your purpose because then you fucking destroyed everything. Mm -hmm. I have no choice but to rebuild. Yeah. And that's the moment you realize that this is what I was supposed to do with my life. Yeah. Otherwise, we're just going through the motion, go through the hamster wheel, just trying to get busy. Mm -hmm. And then that something happens because we decide we want better for ourselves. And yeah. then God says, you want to manifest better? Let me destroy everything mm -hmm. that you have right now so you can decide what you actually want in your life. hundred percent. When you make that change, when you start making the change is when those questions arise and when you're really tested. Mm -hmm. uh, Today, I want to be better. And then all of a sudden, you're going to go through something traumatic, something crazy mm -hmm. is going to happen. You break up you're losing friends or somebody some <coughs> someone tries to do something to you and it's one of those things fuck you know what never mind right now it's not the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but like you got to realize that reason why you're getting tested is because you're about to make a big change in a your big life. breakthrough mm -hmm. and in order for you to make it you have to be tested so that's basically the foundation of why i took some time off from social media right because i i grew to the point where now there was a different level of expectations of me in terms of like the service that I provide, provide for my clients. And I wasn't meeting those expectations, right? Cause the different caliber of person required a different caliber of results that mm. I wasn't used to. Right. So I'm like, all right, do I let go of this opportunity and I crumble on the opportunity that I've been praying to God to give me, or do I step up, get tunnel vision, like really see where my mistakes and my flaws are, fix them. Now I've built on a stronger foundation that if, more growth comes, I'm ready for it, right? But it was exactly that. I had to, in that storm, yeah, really figure it out. I call that know? slingshot mode. Mm. You got to pull Take back for you to go. excel forward, right? Mm. Or, or hermit mode as well, too. Yeah. Like sometimes you feel like, damn, how did I do this shit so fast? Or mm. people see that you made it, You they see the result, right? Mm. They see you lost 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. They see, damn, hell yeah, did it one day, two, <clears throat> 30 days, he did mm. it. But no one realizes how much work mm -hmm. it took prior mm -hmm. to prepare yourself Mentally. to get into that. Mentally, to get into that zone of, 
I can do this. Mm. Not one day, not two days, not just three days. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it for a week. I'm going to turn into a, a month and keep on going. Because when you start making changes and you start letting go of things that were a daily routine for you, you know, it's, it's a habit. Mm-hmm. You're trying to break that habit. Breaking habits, mm-hmm. sometimes we can't do it. It's not that we can't do it. Mm-hmm. We just don't want to do it. Well, also, too, like, I feel like I love this, this like, uh, I want to say call it cool, but, you know, this choice of words, failing forward, right? And I, the reason why I love that is because a lot of times when people try something and they feel that they're inadequate with it or they can't really do it to the best of their ability, yeah. they think that they failed. When in reality, you're going through the motions of achieving that end result that you want, right? It's like riding a bike. You start off on training wheels, then you get rid of the training wheels, and then you can fall a couple of times, but then... You, it just becomes second nature, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And a lot of times people don't realize that it's a long-term effect instead of just, oh, I tried and I failed. I, let me just quit. No, it's like, let's try and fail, try and fail, try and fail mm-hmm. until I get it right. What do you I want? want to play off that one. Back when I played college ball, so the, the gist, because I played running back too, mm-hmm. the gist was if you fall, you always fall forward. Mm-hmm. But we never counted the yards we were running with the football. We called them yak yards. It's mm-hmm. yards after contact. How many yards do you get after you hit, get hit by somebody? Mm. After adversity, how much are you willing to fight for the next yardage? Jeez. Right? And that's, that. that's just like life. When you get hit, how much are you willing to fight for the next yardage? Because that's the only thing that matters, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's easy to run by yourself with a football or run in life when it's easy. But after someone hits you and you experience some adversity, what kind of grit do you have in yourself that you're going to keep Pumping those legs mm. and keep fighting for the yards. So I love, I love that you mentioned yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You, people don't see, people don't see the internal struggle, right? Which is inside we're hurting, but how you said and how you're saying, we keep going forward. I don't, I don't. No one needs to see it. I know what I'm going through, but I'm gonna use it as a motivation to keep on going mm-hmm. forward. No matter how many times I get hit, no many time, how many times I fall down, no matter how many times I get set back. I know I got to keep pushing mm-hmm. forward because my purpose is over there. Mm-hmm. But for you guys, because you, again, like this room and this conversation, like it's just so powerful because we're, we're all going through transitions in life and in mm-hmm. our personal life. Mm-hmm. And we're able to, to share this all together. What is, what is the biggest obstacle that we think as men that we have? For me, it was aligning myself in a way that knowing that I had to let go of things that I loved and the attachment that I had to certain things because they fulfilled an insecurity for me. Mm. I, I didn't realize that I was attaching myself to certain things because they gave me comfort. Understanding that with self-awareness, I was like, once I lost that thing, I realized that I was only finding comfort in that because it made me feel safe. Because other times in my life, I didn't feel safe. Mm. So I had to crack that insecurity and I had to break that conditioning and say, no, that is not a good reason to keep something in your life and for you to really just hold on to it. Mm -hmm. You have to break that conditioning because the other side of that is your growth. The other side is your best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So we have to let it go. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback off of that. Like, um, you know, I shared on my stories recently how, you know, like typical traditional Mexican parents, right? They're your biggest bullies, right? Whether they do it intentionally or not, you know, I grew up, my mom telling me that I wasn't going to be anything without her, that I was a pendejo, that I was this and that, right? My dad never being there. So for a long period of time, I felt worthless and I felt, man, this is, this is just what I'm going to be my entire life, right? And so I became aware enough to realize that I have the opportunity and the power to be able to build and change the way that either the world perceives me or I want to perceive myself. And then from there, I just started testing so many different things, right? Whether it was spiritually, mentally, physically, financially in all these different areas and compounded over time that gave me the freedom to be like I can be so much more Mm -hmm. right but again you have to go through that process of failing forward and thinking that you're not enough for so many years until you break through and you're like man I can do what anything that I want because if I was able to break through from this nothing else can stop me you know it's the power of words the more you say it the more you believe it Mm -hmm. right so if you keep telling I'm not good bro you keep hearing it from somebody else at Dude, I, you're not good enough. Uh, it's not gonna work. And then it's it's the power. The person that's in front of that mirror mm-hmm. when you wake up. What do you tell that person? How you said earlier. Am I proud of the person in front of you? If I'm not, how can I change it? Mm-hmm. You know, telling yourself, "Hey, I am great. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm gonna be great." 
I may not be the best version of myself right now, but I'm working towards it. No one needs to understand mm-hmm. that. But here's the thing, though, too. Like, uh, one of the major things that I've always realized is that you are, you've been who you are without the 100,000 followers. Mm-hmm. He's been who he is, you know, without his success. Mm-hmm. I've been who I am without my success. But it took my environment to catch up to the person that I already was before people started realizing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's the biggest disconnect. A lot of times when people are like, well, I'm giving him my everything. Well, I'm doing this. I'm trying this. I'm, you know, working really hard and I'm not here where I want to be. Well, there's a gradual effect of your environment catching up to the person that you already are. Mm-hmm. And then you just writing it out and still giving it even when times are not developing in the way that you want it to develop, you it's, know? It's timing. Yeah. I, we've talked about this prior, like hitting right now milestones of 100K, millions of views, Ex, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I knew myself that looking back at it now, reflecting on mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. the biggest thing is reflection. If I would have had this a lot faster than I, what I wanted, right? I wanted this ASAP. I wanted yeah. this in two months, three months, six months. If I would have had it back then, my mind, my heart, and my way of living was not ready for mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. It took a process. It took time. And it's like, as <clears throat> we've heard it many times, great things take time. 100%. So imagine you didn't get this opportunity of, of fame, of a job, uh, or whatever the case is, because it, the power above wasn't new. You were not ready to accept that mm-hmm. just yet. Mm-hmm. And again, you get a big lump of money. With, if, you're not, if you're not ready for it, you can have a million dollars. Steve Harvey said it first. You said it before, I can give you a million dollars, but if you're not ready for it and know how to handle it, those million are gone. Yeah, that's like, why a majority of NFL full players go bankrupt after they... Yeah, there's like a certain mm-hmm. statistic, yeah, right? It's like, like a very high percentage of them. Like, most of them end up broke. Same thing for like NBA players mm-hmm. and big athletes. But even like it, it's social media. We're in the social media industry. People portray this big thing about money parties, lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But again, how you said, once it turned out, once these lights are uh-huh. on, once no one's around, what do you have? Yep. And you got to be okay with yourself too. Cause I feel like one of the biggest reasons why I feel like people go into like depressions or those, you know, challenging moments is because they play a character that they're not really behind the scenes, exactly. you know? Mm-hmm. And when your mind starts getting tired of playing that character, you know what I mean? You fall victim to your own trap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a, I mean, you could kind of put it in context of, like, a car. You need to have maintenance, right? Mm-hmm. You cannot put off-roading tires. I mean, you can't you can put off-roading tires on a little Honda. Mm-hmm. Right. It doesn't fit it. A lot mm-hmm. of people try to mm-hmm. fit pieces to their life and additions that, yo, it doesn't fit you. Mm-hmm. It's not for you. I'm not saying, doesn't mean, like, even friends, right? <clears throat> maybe your friend wants to party. Maybe your friend wants to do this and that or have this. But maybe for you it doesn't align, mm-hmm. and that's okay. You have to, we have to understand that what's for you is for you and mm-hmm. what's for them is for them. Mm-hmm. And you cannot hold anybody back from what they want to do because mm-hmm. people try to, you got to be exactly the way I am and mm-hmm. me too. But you stress out more because they're not changing. Mm-hmm. Let go. Mm-hmm. Let go. Mm-hmm. Let, let them be who they were. And if, if the door you're about to go through in life is ready for it, mm-hmm. they, that person will come through the door with you. Mm-hmm. And if they're not, they will come at their own pace and their own yeah. time. Mm-hmm. If they make it, <clears throat> if they want to. It's, it's all in divine timing. Yeah. So how do we, for you guys, how do you def- define time? What is it worth to you? I think time is a false thing. I think time is something that as human beings, we thought that is a tangible thing, but as spiritual beings, not human beings, because we're, we're spiritual beings first, human second, mm-hmm. that time is something that we think is something. But in the scope of the universe, time is not a real thing. It, everything happens how it's supposed to happen. You weren't ready for that type of success because you couldn't carry that burden yet, mm-hmm. right? I, I experienced a lot of success early on, and my guys did too, and I've watched it ruin people, mm-hmm. right? But if God knew this was your purpose, he knew that he didn't want to ruin it for you, mm-hmm. right? So he wanted to make sure that your tendons, your mind, your spirit was strong enough to carry that load because one day you're going to have to, Pay it forward. Mm -hmm. And that's your part of your purpose. Mm. But if you're too weak to hold that load, you can't give to others. Yeah. Right? 100%. And if I'm piggyback off what he said too, it's like a lot of the times, like 
people want to skip steps that are necessary for you to be able to sustain the level of, you know, gracefulness that God's going to give you, right? And, you know, a lot of the reason why I say that is because I feel like in every area of my life, like whether I felt like I deserved it or not, God gave me the opportunity to be able to work with some of the best and the best, depending on different industries, right? And I've always wondered, like, why? You know what I mean? I'm like, why me? If internally, I felt worthless, right? Not, well, yeah, I guess you can say that. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but then it's like, okay, why am I working with the best of the best when it comes to real estate? Why do I know the top of the top of the influencers? Why do I know the top of the top of entrepreneurs, right? And then it made me realize that I was meant to go through all these things so that now I'm able to be a better leader to my people, a better leader to my community, a better leader to my family. But if I wasn't exposed to every layer of it, if I would have just gone to this and I became aware there were so many missing pieces that were going to be essential for me to be able to, again, be a better leader to my people. You know? It's almost like saying, would I rather be born rich or build rich? Mm. Right? Because then when you build rich, then I can go broke tomorrow and rebuild that shit. Yeah, 100%. But if you were born rich, you lose it tomorrow, then you're going to be broke for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know you did it already. You know mm. you can make it. You know... You Something they can't take away from you. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. capable of it. So when you build it from the ground up, there, how you said, mm-hmm. no one can take that shit from mm-hmm. you. No matter how hard people try, you you can take this uh, like a lion, bro. You take him out of the jungle, he's still going to be a lion. lion yep. He's still going to be who he is, taking a wolf out of his habitat. Why do we call it lone wolf? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they're still going to be who they are. So if you're true to who you are, no matter what environment you're going to be put, placed in, you're going to be who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's about adapting. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe ah, I wasn't ready, dog. I'm not good enough. And we do have those conversations mm-hmm. to ourselves like, nah, bro, you know what? I'm not good enough. I don't, that's why it's not popping. That's why it's not viral. Shit. Year later. Mm-hmm. Year and a half later. Mm-hmm. It's our environment is catching up to who we are now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's tough for, like, again, people that are listening, you know, when they go through a sense of loss, mm-hmm. losing people that they wish, mm-hmm. damn, bro, I wish this person would have been here. Mm-hmm. I know it would have been great. Mm-hmm. We would have done great things. Mm-hmm. Nah, I don't think so. Like, if you really think about it, why aren't they there with you now? They weren't ready. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, you could have done great things, but how great would it have been if that person wasn't ready and you're still trying to drag it along? It's like trying to take a kid out of a fucking toy store. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would just say, yeah. you know, like my son wanted a toy and I'm over here ha- dragging him out. Mm-hmm. They don't want to do that, bro. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be there. So mm-hmm. losses, how do you, as a man, how do you handle losing people and losing opportunities? As a mature man, mm-hmm. a man, a 20 man, a 20 year old man, I experienced those losses and got engulfed with emotions. And I let those emotions control me. Mm. Like, oh, my God, I missed that person, blah, 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 what, do we, what happened? But as a mature man, knowing <coughs> that it's all about alignment, yeah. Yeah. energies, vibrations, all the things that are aligning with my purpose. And like we talked about earlier, sometimes our people are just the, whatever, the rocket pads or the boosters for us just to get out of the atmosphere. But once they fall off, then we reach where we're, our destination is, mm. right? So, like, we know that they were only there to serve a purpose during our lives. Like, I've had people serve the most amazing purposes in my life when I needed them. Mm. And I don't think I would have got through it without them, mm-hmm. right? So I always have to give grace and appreciation and gratitude to the people that held me down during a time that they were supposed to hold me down. Mm-hmm. Like, that was just the universe's, you know, script for mm-hmm. me. But understanding that the universe changes, plans change, purposes change, mm-hmm. people change. And then when that happens, we have to be able to let people go. Yeah. Let things go. Yeah. That attachment that I said that I had insecurities about my own self, I had to look myself in the mirror and be mm-hmm. like, why am I so attached to this one thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What f- insecurity is it fulfilling for me? Mm-hmm. Once I cracked that conditioning, then I realized that I only needed that because I felt comfort in that, and that was stopping my growth. Mm. Analyzing and realizing exactly what the issue is. Mm-hmm. We don't. A lot of people don't want to do that work be, because we don't want to know the reality. Mm. I don't want to know the truth. Mm-hmm. You're not succeeding because of this, and when you tell someone that is not ready for that growth, they neglect it. Hundred percent. Like, nope. Oh, nah, you're fucking full of it. Mm-hmm. They start distancing because they don't want to hear the truth. Mm-hmm. 
if they love you, they'll tell you how it is. Mm. If the person really cares about you, and as much as they may hurt you, the truth hurts you, they will tell you. Mm. But if they just want to enable who you are, continue to do this, mm. hey, fuck it. There's this one saying that is, you can't mess up something that is meant for you. And that was powerful mm. to me. No matter what I do, if that shit is meant for me, it's always going to be meant for me. Mm. But it's, if it's not meant for me, I could try so hard till I'm blue in the face and it's not going to work out. Mm. So understanding that with faith, whether you have faith in God spiritually or just with yourself, yeah. understanding that what's meant for me will come and will be attracted to me and what is not will be repelled. And then even in mm. that, that's my best version coming out in that situation. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Understanding yeah. that as a mature adult, that shit propelled me into my next version. Mm. So I had to go into hermit mode a little bit because I understood that I was going through an incubator phase. I was my, that was my caterpillar to butterfly moment. Mm. I had to bust out my cocoon and be like, I had to go through that. Mm. This is something I had to hurt about. And I didn't shy away from that pain. Mm. I leaned into that shit. Mm. Let's feel this Mm. as, as human beings, we get so obsessed with the, the ride down on the roller coaster. Right. But why don't we emphasize that in the life? We get so anticipating the top of that roller coaster and then we put our hands down for the ride. Mm. Same thing with life, bro. We, right? It's a roller coaster ride. Yeah. The biggest, one of the biggest blessings that we have is being able to go through pain. Mm-hmm. Because through pain, we learn. Through pain, we grow. Through pain, we mm. literally become a different version of ourselves that, yo, you surprise yourself. Mm. You are this bad motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You are strong. You are amazing you just had to go through this first mm-hmm. yeah. you know you had to fall down you had to cry you had to be depressed whatever it is mm-hmm. suffer this loss but by the time you get up hey, what else is gonna knock you down dog i mean well think about it this way right it's like a lot of us want to be at you know our desired outcome right but if you were to be placed there you would probably hate it and you would crumble to that amount of pressure right if you can't handle the pressure that God is giving you right now, like what makes you think you're going to be able to sustain that, right? Yeah. And if you really look at, you know, how things are going on right now in the world, it's like everybody wants to lower that bar of greatness to where now it's everything is equal when they don't realize that even if everything is equal and they get what they think they want, once they get it, they're going to have to look internally on an even deeper level mm-hmm. yeah. and realize that it, the thing that they thought was going to make them happy is not making them happy. Imagine everybody got a test trial to what Greatness was first, like an astronaut. Mm-hmm. Before everybody says, "I want to go to the moon, dog," yeah, but they don't know that. The in order to go, yeah, <laughs> they gotta they go through a test, yeah, and bro, you hold on for dear life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think there's, there's a saying that if God doesn't want you to know what it takes to get to where you want to go, because if you knew exactly what it took, you wouldn't want that goal anymore. Yeah. And that's real shit. Mm-hmm. There's so many battles that go yeah. between you and where you want to be tomorrow that if you knew, would you still want it? Yeah. It's going to take you getting your heart broken 60 different times by Losing different people. things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People that you thought were to be there forever and aren't going to be there. They're, mm-hmm. they're just mm-hmm. mean time. They're just lessons. Yeah. Would like, you still want it? Like if you're able to see what you have to go through in order to get to point B, mm-hmm. point A to point B, if you see what is going to happen... More than any, more, I can promise mm-hmm. you, you're probably going to be like, nah, nah never you would mind. give, I'll You be, would I'll give up good. on life. Yeah. You would give up on life. Yeah, yeah you'll be done. Yeah. What, what is meant for you will be meant for you, right? Breaking gener- generational curses, mm. cycles, because your parent, your uncle, your brother, your sister was this, you're the next one up. Mm. And then, and then we start living life on our own, yeah. on our own terms. And we realize, oh, maybe I don't want to be that. Maybe mm-hmm. that's not for me. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we had a conversation yesterday with, with a, a business owner, a restaurant owner. And I asked him, do you force this on your kids? Mm-hmm. Like, because I have this, it's you guys next. Mm-hmm. You can't force it mm-hmm. on nobody, mm-hmm. on nobody. Reason why I'm, I'm bringing this up, because... We are so conditioned as youngsters from elementary, middle school, high school. Mm. You are going to be this, and that's all you're going to do. It's like five categories. Firefighter, police officer, doctor, lawyer, 
school teacher. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah nurse. nurse. There you go. Yeah. And I feel like that's the downfall of why a lot of people can't find who they are. Right. Because they feel like if I don't fit these molds, then there must be something wrong with me. It's because we you know? go into the, like, just so we can bounce this off, like, in order to make your parents proud and your family proud, you need to do this. Mm -hmm. But, I, I mean, it, it feels like, you know, going into the, the whole conditioning aspect of things, right? It's like the same way that our parents were brought up is what they're going to translate over to us, right? Yeah. And a lot of times it takes, again, you know, deep diving into yourself internally to realize, like, Okay, I'm aware enough to know that the reason why my mom expects for me to be a nurse, a doctor, a lawyer is because that was her conditioning growing up. But that doesn't mean that there isn't more stuff out there that now I can rewire my family and my next generation's mindset to realize that those aren't the only possibilities out there, right? Especially now with social media, like okay. you're exposed to so many industries, fitness trainers, ultra successful coaches, uh, just influencers in general, just people in general, like crushing and becoming who they've always wanted to be through non-traditional forms of yeah. career paths, right? Yeah. So now with that in mind, it's like, okay, how can now we rewire now that we're more aware and exposed to things that maybe our parents weren't exposed to, and now we can leverage to our advantage to now realize like, hey, by the time that I have my sons and, and my daughters, their possibilities are endless. They don't have to fit these molds that society, school, where people are telling that they need to be when I've already exposed to knowing that there's so many things out there that they can be happy doing, you know, it is not defined by, you know, making an income. I mean, obviously, yeah, income plays a huge role, but I mean, if you were to tell me, Hey, you can be happy while doing something that you love and you're going to live good, be happy. Like I'm going to try to take that. You can monetize your dream. Yeah. That's the beauty about life right now. 100%. On social media. No matter if you love to cook, if you love to be a trainer, if you love to coach, you can monetize mm -hmm. all of this. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just you might be broke for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, but that's you, a byproduct yeah, you, of you getting that. You might spend mm -hmm. a little, more than enough or more than you have. You might be not get no return. No return for six months, a year, year and a half, two, three years. Mm -hmm. And then maybe on day 402. You get blessed. You mm. get that payback. Yeah, yeah. I want to touch on that conditioning part again one more time. As a, if I, so as a strength conditioning specialist, what I do is teach movements to people and I try to solidify them mm. and try to be the best possible wow. to be as strong as possible, right? Wow. Mm. Give me strong. Chris. I need so it. So <laughs> if I look at a body movement, psychologically as well, it takes 500 repetitions for muscle memory, mm. 10,000 reps for mastering that movement. Mm. In conditioning, if we're told something enough, we believe it. Mm. So in order to crack that conditioning, we have to hear it so many more times to crack that. Mm. So if I, growing up as a kid, even if I wasn't, if I was just a little bit chubby, right, and somebody walked up to me and said, you're fat, the only way that that reinforces with me, if I believe a little bit of that, mm. and then that sticks to me, mm. and somebody else says, I think you're fat, then that reinforces it. That yeah. conditioning becomes muscle memory in my mind. Mm. Now I have to overdo to try and crack that conditioning. 100%. Right? So then when we grow up and we hear our parents saying these things, you have to get a nine to five job. You have mm. to get benefits. How are you going to take care of your family? Over and over again every day. It means nothing to us in the moment, but that repetition. Yeah. And then you, so, and then you give up. Mm -hmm. You're like, fuck it. Everybody's saying it. I'm going to be an idiot regardless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm only good for nine to five. Fuck it. Let me just mm -hmm. go get a nine mm -hmm. to five. Yeah. And you live life so fucking miserable. Like, yeah. you wake up not happy. You wake up dra dragging out of bed. Oh, I got to go. Oh, fuck, I get, I have to go here. No, mm -hmm. motherfucker, you get to go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whether, I've seen that some of the happiest people work nine to five jobs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they genuinely love it. Yeah. Being entrepreneurs, it's, it may not be for everyone. Their happiness mm -hmm. may be a nine to five. Our happiness is determined of if we're living our purpose. Mm -hmm. But again, is breaking is breaking those generational mm -hmm. curses. Curses the, those generational conversations that mm -hmm. because their parents had it with them, they're having it with us. Okay, now it's our turn to have it with ours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have to be willing to do it by yourself too, because you're going to have to go back to your family and they're going to tell you how wrong you are. Yeah. But how you do you do that though? Like well, no one wants to do that. Here's here's the thing though, and I think the more we talk about this, the more that people are going to be aware of. Right. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say this is because going back to you know, when we had our, our the, the previous podcast, a lot of times we want to carry people through something that we yet haven't been through, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like if they haven't seen it, 
how are they going to believe it, mm -hmm. right? You can have the vision, you can have the idea, and it sounds good in theory, mm -hmm. but until you actually make it happen, then they're going to believe you because now they're seeing it with their own eyes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now that you've done it, then you can be that beacon of hope and say, hey, yep. here's how I exactly. did it. You know what I mean? Otherwise, like people are trying to do it backwards. Yeah. They're trying to get the, the support, the encouragement, the attention without even having to do the work. Like I appreciate, I appreciate you telling me you know, how to do it to get to this point here, mm -hmm. this position. But, you know, uh, you know you're know, you not even there. Yep. You're telling me because you wished upon it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wishing only gets you so far, mm -hmm. meaning <laughs> it stays as a wish. Mm -hmm. Until you put action behind it, right. then you make it a reality. Yeah. You know, make your dream a reality. Dream first, envision it. All right, now what does it take for me Chip away. to get there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got to, maybe you got to walk that lonely ass road. You have to, and bro. Yeah. Maybe not a lot of people get happy, but I promise, bro, like at the end of it, as soon as you make it out of that tunnel that got very lonely, they come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They see that, oh, yeah, this is what you meant. Literally. Oh, yeah. oh that's where you were heading yeah. to. Yeah, I mean, that's why for me, like a wolf is always like a big representation of me. I have it there. Mm -hmm. I have it tattooed on myself mm -hmm. wow. um, because I had to go through that lonely road, right? Through that darkness of me feeling alone for so many years, nobody believing in me, everybody doubting me, people calling me crazy. I was like an outsider, right? There's a, a super powerful quote that says, um, a lion may be more powerful than the wolf, but the wolf will never perform in a circus. And the reason why that's important uh, like is because that. like you have to be intentionally and like really believe in who you are yeah. to know that you don't have to be applauded for everything that you do, but know that you're committed enough to see it through so that when things are said and done, people are going to be like, ah, now I get it. Now I know why he was comfortable being questioned, doubted, criticized, people calling you crazy because he knew exactly what was going to happen five years down the road, right? When I was going through that phase, I was like, instead of reacting, I was like, okay, just, just give me two years. Yeah. Just give me three years and you'll see what I mean. I and a lot of times people want to prove their point now yeah. without being able to and, see it through. And I, and I would take it from my personal standpoint, too. Not getting the applause, not getting the recognition, not getting the, hey, I'm proud of you. At, during the, the beginning stages and in the middle, it was hurtful. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, damn, I'm trying to be this big person and trying to get, be in my purpose. But no one's applauding. Mm -hmm. No one's giving me that pat on the back. No one's giving me my flowers. I don't need them. Mm -hmm. because I'm serving my purpose. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my applause, my pat on the back, my <clears throat> I'm proud of you, it's coming from a higher power mm -hmm. right now, where I'm okay to be alone. Mm -hmm. Do I like it? No, no one mm -hmm. likes being alone. Mm -hmm. But sometimes to, to be that better version of yourself, you have to go through that lonely road. And the person that is sitting alone and no one around, bro, doesn't need nobody that's one powerful motherfucker yeah, literally. because yeah. he is good on this lonely road because mm -hmm. out of everybody, he is doing it and he doesn't need nobody around him. Mm -hmm. He knows where he's headed to mm -hmm. and he knows, hey, it's going to get lonely it's and I'm power. not quitting. I'm not, I'm not retracting my steps. I'm not retracting my moves. I'm going to keep going. Mm -hmm. one, of the but, one of the big, biggest blessings I've ever had was people retracting their support for me because mm -hmm. I didn't have the crutch to allow them to keep making my weakness is weaker you know? mm. as long as i can crawl i can limp that walk that travel that journey gets stronger but if i keep relying on a crutch whether it be support from the family yeah. that will always be something i will rely on mm. yeah. you know what i'm saying That's a fact. so then once that yeah. you get it strong enough to walk by yourself i can start running yeah. i can start sprinting i can start doing the things by myself and then if people want to add in that support then now they're just cheerleaders mm. it's, it's like, not something that made my journey if right you think about it it's like a rehab Mm -hmm. You get hurt, exactly. you know, you're depending on rehab. And one of, one of, I would, I would say this guy is just amazing. Jimmy, Jimmy House. Mm -hmm. He tore his ACL mm -hmm. and every, mm -hmm. he didn't go to no doctor. He didn't, he didn't go through therapy. His therapy and his rehab was him doing it himself, mm -hmm. doing the exercises, doing what's needed for him to get better. Self-healed. Mm -hmm. And it's that self-healing. So, mm -hmm. Right now, I needed everybody, right? In order for us to be successful, we need everybody around us because we're going to hold on. Mm. They're going to pick me up when I need it. But what are you going to do when no one's around? Mm. Yeah. Because this journey that you're going on is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So do you get up and keep going or retract it, close that door, let me go back where it's safe? Mm. 
Not for everybody. Well, that's the reason why there's not much top. That there's not much space at the top of the mountain, right? Because some people are gonna fall back down. You just mm-hmm. gotta keep knowing that there's a reason for what you're going through. But then you become selfish, bro. <laughs> that's fine because this is the, at the end of the day, what I eat, you don't shit. Mm-hmm. So this is my life, mm-hmm. right? So I gotta keep moving with my moves. I gotta keep staying in my lane, like Nipsey Hustle said. There's no no traffic in my lane. Mm-hmm. Right, so I gotta keep moving Literally. with what I'm moving with. Stay in yours. Yeah, uh-huh. you stay in yours. I stay in mine, and mm-hmm. you know we will be good, bro. Like, even if you think your partner needs to support you, if your mom, dad, sister, brother, cousins, f- close friends, best friends need to support you in your journey, I'm sorry. Yeah. You're gonna come to a hard realization yeah. that you don't need it. Yeah, I'm gonna say yourself. something that's speaking a little bit more like on the ego side of things, right? I personally feel that if I'm able to accomplish things that not everybody can, that just makes me different. And I strive on that. You know, like I crave that feeling of like being able to do things that not the majority are willing to be able to put themselves through to be able to get a specific result. Right. And so there's a, a, a winning, even in the losing. Mm -hmm. Right. Because a lot of times it's like, Oh, well, nobody's, nobody's supporting me. Mm -hmm. Nobody's doubting me. I mean, nobody's, uh, encouraging me nobody's applauding me that's the losing side of it right embrace that shit you know that's your winning that's your win because from there you're going to get the right energy to be able to channel you to get to that end goal but then also too here's the transition of more of the maturity side right letting go of that ego it's like i've had to realize that even though quote unquote that darkness version of me in terms of like energy cannot get me to that best version of me i have to even let go of that right so you have there's Key moments that you're going to chip away at your ego, your arrogance, like all these little things that you have to let die as much as you let die relationships, friendships, family, et cetera, is the same way that you have to be able to let things die through you internally, yeah. right? So I feel like for think about this this way, right? Do you feel it's easier to lose key things within you personally or more of losing people along the way, like friends, family, and all that? What do you think is harder? Answer first. Oh, let's let you go for it. <laughs> it's easy. A wise man speaks last. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a monster. <laughs> um, for me personally, I would say before this, where I'm at now, it was a lot harder for me to lose people. It's okay. So now, with that in mind, that's why we have to lose people so that after that, we can start working on ourselves internally. You know what I mean? Because you're able to go through that version of the pain, the doubt, all that. You can always reflect and look internally to now be able to fix the things that, like how he said, right? The what things were, how did you say it? Like you're, like you are using those as like a mask for your own, how would you say it? That term wanna got me. No, I'm playing. <laughs> yeah. You know how you, like, those were like um, ways in. in safe zone. It was no, no, no. Like comfort. No, he's something else. That's like your. Fuck. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Give <laughs> 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 me a shot. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah, I'm fucking trying to blank. That fucking on it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> like launching pad. No, like, like your own insecurities are. I think. Uh, I forgot how you said it, bro. I'm trying to blank. I can't remember. We play the clips. Yeah. But it's basically like your the things that forget it. Let's just give <laughs> <keep> it. <laughs> All right. So now, can can you answer that question that he asked? Just so the way man. I look at it is, it's harder to lose something in myself because losing somebody's physical and tangible. But is that now from where you're at today or from where you As started? As a mature man now. But what because about prior to I didn't to that? know things existed enough for me to lose them before. Mm. But now as I grew up and I became mature, I started realizing how to navigate in my own system. And that I, like you said earlier, I can rewire my brain mm-hmm. to be someone else. I didn't know I could do that before. Yeah, yeah. So then now I was losing people my whole life. So I got used to that. Yeah. I got used to losing that battle sometimes. Like you get used to people walking out your life and you having to like respond through getting calloused, right? Yeah. I didn't realize that there was something in me I could lose. Mm. But I didn't also realize that every time someone left me, I lost something in myself mm. and I had to rebuild. 
Yeah. And I had to refocus. I had to refine. I had to repurpose. Mm, I had to yeah. sh- iron sharpens iron. Mm. I had to put good people around me that had the same purposes mm. as me because I had to let them sharpen me. Mm. But I didn't know I needed that before. But as the mature male now going through what I went through, I'm, I know that there's this intangible thing inside me that sometimes it gets chipped away at. Mm. And I have to come to terms with that because I have to regrow it. Mm. I have to reshape it because that means that my purpose needed that reshaping for me to be the man I could achieve what I wanted to achieve. Mm. Right. And so I started realizing that as time went on, but it it took me sitting down by myself and fighting through these voices of me not being good enough of what my parents telling me that, that I I wasn't good enough to go to watch me play football or whatever. Mm. I didn't have that self-worth in me. I didn't Mm. even know how to rebuild it Mm. until I had my daughter, I had my son. And I sat down and was like, there's a lot of shit in here that I have to deal with. Mm. But I was just so used to losing physical things, Mm. you know? There is a a phrase, uh, a saying that Deion Sanders had said, because everybody see how flashy he is. Everybody see, like, he comes out to, like, some of the best music and play my song, right? Mm. Has this confidence, this ego that everybody's like... And I, I, he stuck up, or mm-hmm. he's full of himself. But how he said, and I think this ties in perfectly, this confidence comes because he built it, because yeah. he was alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When he was younger, they didn't get the applause, they didn't mm-hmm. get the thank yous, they didn't get I'm proud of you. No one came to watch mm-hmm. him play. No one came to support him. Mm-hmm. So all that happened, and he took it upon himself that, I need to do this. Mm. I need to be my biggest support system. Mm. I need to be my biggest mm. fan. Mm-hmm. So everybody's seen the, the byproduct of what had happened here, which is I was alone. No one came. No one was around. Mm. Well, now I'm here. Now I'm good to be alone. Mm-hmm. Right? So mm-hmm. like tying into that, we're learning that tell yourself you're mm. proud. Tell yourself you are great. Tell yourself you can be this. Mm. The more you tell yourself, mm-hmm. the more you condition yourself, mm-hmm. the more you condition your mind and your heart mm. that, hey, you could be love, you can love, and you could be great. Mm. Rewiring. Until, you reala- until you realize that, man, it, it, it's, it's a journey yeah. that it's painful, man. Like how you, we said prior, if, if we can show you right now what your journey will, will be, what's the end goal, but you got to go through all this first, yeah. you know, it could, it could be meeting your wife. Yeah. Meeting yeah. your wife getting married happily ever after, but no one told you you were going to suffer five fucking breakups mm-hmm. from here. Getting cheated on. Getting getting, mm-hmm. cheated on, feeling worthless, feeling mm-hmm. helpless, going through traumatic events. Mm-hmm. No one told you you were going to go through that, but here you are, living life, mm-hmm. happy, happily ever after. Mm-hmm. Great things take time. 100%. Even, um, I mean, as a kid, <clears throat> my brother passed away when I was 10, right? Oh, wow. And ever since then... I don't know why. Like, think about this, right? I was 10 years old, and in the back of my mind, I was already thinking, like, if God left me over my brother was for a reason, Yeah. right, since 10. And obviously, I went through all this shit, right, you know, like, my whole upbringing, my, like, again, re- having to rewire myself. I think maybe I even started when I was maybe, like, 23, 24. Up to then, I was still, you know, beat down by life, right? But now, how things are unfolding, it's like, now I, that makes sense, mm-hmm. right? Because I had to go through all these things to now realize that, okay, if God gave me a platform, he gave me the ability to be able to work on my mind, myself internally, be able to face my demons and come out on top, there's a reason why. Because now I can be the light for somebody else that is going through that tunnel, right? Mm-hmm. And even on the opposite side is like a lot of the times us as like individuals who have the capacity to put ourselves through pain, we don't want to stand in the light, right? Because standing in the light means that a lot more people are going to attack us because now we're a reflection of what they're not. Right. And they still haven't maybe gone through that period of their life where they have accepted that they can rewire themselves and condition themselves to be something different. Yeah. And say they just think, oh, he's lucky or she is lucky or they just, you know, they're just gifted. Right. Or God bless them with something that I wasn't blessed with without realizing that that person probably went through either the exact same amount of pain that you did or more to be able to be able to stand there. You, know? and you can. I, I think it's it's a it's one of those. Ego things, right? Like, man, I went through a worse life than you. Mm. You had it easy. Mm. What if my easiness is the one that affected me the most? Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, I have, a, I've had, and I have a great life, a very blessed life. But doesn't mean I didn't go through stuff. Mm-hmm. 
doesn't mean I didn't go through traumatic events that hurt me and put me down where, you know, maybe I don't want to be here today. Maybe I don't want to be here ever again. But doesn't mean I get to... Just because you didn't suffer that same loss doesn't mean I'm not going to mm. take in consideration your emotions and feelings. Mm. Your greatest loss might be something minimal, but it's how you feel. Yeah. It's you, dog. Like That's the thing about uh, us as men. We feel we, we have to be little other people because if they don't have the flyest car, mm. they don't have mm -hmm. money, they don't have opportunities or whatever the case is, mm -hmm. I'm going to belittle you. Mm. I'm better than you. But like we talked earlier, Maybe the guy sitting at the top of the top of the building, high rise, richest motherfucker, might be the most emptiest motherfucker mm. here. While the guy that's at the first floor is the most fulfilled. just happy to be there. Yeah. yeah. One yeah. of my favorite quotes is no one knows the violence it took to be this gentle. Ooh. Right. But. And then if you want to be a great warrior, you have to have battle scars. Mm -hmm. You have to be battle tested. Yeah. Everybody wants to be a warrior or everyone wants to be a beast, so it's time to do what beasts do, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Battle tested. Hearing that you lost your brother at 10 years old, man, that's fucking hard, mm -hmm. dude. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You're fucking battle tested. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine being a 10 year old kid going through that. Yeah. That's battle tested, mm -hmm. bro. You were meant to do something great because yeah. of that. And I hear people like, it's just like you, what you're saying. I, I try to be a light for people. So when I see a other light in somebody, I try to yeah, pour more into that yeah. shit, dude. Good for you. Mm -hmm. For real, man. It, and that's why that all shit, this bro. happens, this you, right you here. That's something that I think is very powerful. At 10 years old, you ask yourself, why did God leave me here and mm -hmm. took, my bro took my brother? For you, what, how do you, now looking back, if you can look back from where you're standing now and when you were 10 years old. Damn, I'm already Dude, <laughs> I'm about to start crying. <laughs> That's fucking yeah. making me emotional. What, yeah. How do you, what, how does that make you feel? What would you tell your brother? Like, You know, I think it's like a, it's like a very hard thing for me because like I feel like I can endure a lot of pain, but losing my brother probably has been one thing that I will never, ever heal from. You know what I mean? And it's the only thing that I ever can bring up and it will always make me emotional. Like it's just something that I guess I'll just never um, properly heal. But, you know, I think, um, uh, again, you know, as, as hard as this might sound, what I'm about to say I think it took losing my brother to realize that I had a purpose in life, right? Mm -hmm. If maybe I would have had my brother growing up with me, I probably would have never became the person that I am today. And again, this might sound harsh, but maybe the purpose that God had for me was bigger than just one person, which could have been my brother. My purpose is now impacting hundreds, thousands, whatever that amount might be, right? So in the bigger scale of things, it's like, okay, it's painful. It hurts. It might be something that I'll never recover from, but if my purpose in life is to be who I'm meant to be without him, then so be it. Because in what I do, I'm honoring his name. Because as much as this might be my purpose, I'm also building this because of him. I want him to always be proud of me. I want him to always know that, you know, I'm always like taking care of mom, you know, like, Oh. Dude, this is making me emotional. <laughs> Fuck. You know, I take, that I take care of my mom, that I learn my lesson. Because my brother, I've always been like the shy, quiet one, right? Yeah. And my brother has always been the one that's like, you know, even if I was getting pushed in, in the school line, he, he was younger than me. And he would go push and be like, like, tu que pendejo. Like, what's up, motherfucker? You know what I mean? Like, he would always stick up for me. Um, so now knowing that I'm where I'm at, it's like I always... Always, that always gives me strength to know that I feel like he's always going to be a part of me. And where I grab strength from is remembering how he was and his character. And I carry on his character to be able to fulfill what I need to fulfill in my life. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's just, yeah. it's, a, it's hard. I think I'm usually pretty good at putting things into words. But when it comes to my brother, there's always that Gap. There's always I was, that. Uh, I was wondering why I was resonating with you so much. When I was 13 years old, I watched my sister try to kill herself. Mm. And if I would have lost her in those moments, because I unpacked that like years after, I, I suppressed mm. that for a long time. And my sister's really good with like therapy and stuff like that. And what she told me was, I put you in a position to make a grown person's decision when you weren't of the age to make that decision. Mm. You were put in a position to 
deal with a grown up's trauma when you weren't grown up yet. So when I see people come out of that moment and like do something great with their lives, man, that means the world to me because mm. I, I'm hoping that one day that I could say something to a younger kid that, that feels that shit so much that he's able to be something with himself. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Because I can't imagine what it feels like, bro. I watched my sister try to kill herself and then she came back after. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So like for me to see you pick yourself up off the ground as a young kid because that's a very vital moment mm. in your life. You can either choose to go this way or that way. And 99% of those kids that age go the opposite way. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like that's why I, again, like the whole, I talk a lot about like the dark, darkness aspect of life, right? And the process. And the reason being is because that's where a lot of people are. But they don't realize that that's a part for you to get to the light, right? Yeah. You know, kind of adding to what you were saying. Um, I don't really like to share it because it's, you know, it has to do with my mom, but after my brother passed away, um, my dad basically ended up cheating on my mom. So, like, imagine feeling the pain of losing your son, yeah. then that you, the person that was supposed to be there for you, love you, um, Hurt. hurts you even deeper, right? So my mom, she tried to commit suicide from that, right? Wow. So I got to see what my mom looked like. Um, <clears throat> so... So I got to see what it looked like um, to see my mom overdose, you know what I mean? And I think the <clears throat> the biggest thing that I remember from it is that I was trying to hug her. And she was just, like, kicking me away, right? And <clears throat> as a kid that just went through all that, it's like, man, like, this is my last line of like love and protection right so i think ever since that moment from there like i just felt like um like worthless for such a very long time <clears throat> right but with that in mind it was always like if i can endure this like i can endure anything right and now seeing how things have unfolded now i'm able to see my mom smile being able to do things with my mom and seeing how her life now has changed for the better like but we had to go through that together, you know? It Maybe at that certain time, we didn't understand it, but now, you know, in this specific time, like, it's it's different. I don't know. Like, I just, it's hard for me to, like, really put into words um, just, like, the whole process of it, right? Because it's still something that I personally think, I think I've healed for so many other things, but this situation, I'm like, you know, that specific moments are things I'll never, like, be able to overcome, you know? Perfect. Fuck, you made me cry, dude. I know. Fuck yeah, yeah. Me too. Um, creating a creating a safe space is is super huge for people to understand that you know, and why people are so scared to be vulnerable, to talk about emotions, to talk about their feelings or what they're going through, what they went through, how they're feeling. You know, but me and Dylan have got a mess. Oh, I never. I don't tell nobody because nobody cares. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't share it because who's listening? I'm not sharing it because why does anybody want to? Mm. You just never been in a safe space. Mm. You just haven't been sharing it with the right people mm. that are willing to listen and want to listen, mm. and they're not feeling bad for you. They're just they're being empathetic, right? It's it's part of our, our human nature, but they're just being that that rock for you if you were to fall that cushion. Mm. If you were to fall for, I got you. You shared something super huge with us. And um, if you were, one message that would you have for your brother if him, I know he's watching you. I know he's looking over you. I know he's protecting you because that's just what happens when we lose somebody, right? But if you can put out a message for your brother, what would that be? Man, I think it would have to be, you know, like, for him to know that I got it from here, you know, I think, um, you know, another thing that I always, <clears throat> that always stays in my mind is like hearing him say like, like, I don't want to die. You know what I mean? Cause his death wasn't like an instant thing, you know, where most people just had a car accident or, or, or something like that for him. It was a process. He went through leukemia. He went through chemo. He went through the, uh, transplant. Um, and everything was looking good. And then all of a sudden it was like, He's not reacting well to it. Um, so he got to experience what it was like to 
feel like his death was coming, you know, to coming close. Um, but yeah, I think it's just that, you know, like <clears throat> it's hard to say it, but it's like, you know, like I got it from here, you know, like I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take care of mom. Like, <clears throat> like I named, I named my son after him, you know? And so, <clears throat> like, <clears throat> all the love that I wish I could have given to him, I give that to my son, you know? And <clears throat> obviously my son is his own person, right? And I'm never going to love my son just because he reminds me of my brother, but I feel like through him, like, I'm able to, like, kind of fill that void to us one and that gap of needing to give the love that I wish I could have given him like growing up, you know, cause he was my best friend. Um, so just, I want to honor his name, you know, continue his legacy, um, through, through my son, through myself, through my mom. And like I said earlier, you know, just, I got it from here. You know. Hey, fuck man, why are we crying all the time though? I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what was your brother's name? Luis. Luis Enrique. Yeah. So my, my son, his name is uh, Aiden Luis. Same you personality, see, same you see character. a lot of your brother and your son? Bro, same face, same character, same everything. I'm a huge believer in reincarnation. Mm. I, I truly believe that. Yeah. Even my mom. Like, I know she has, she, my mom has the hardest time, like, kind of saying it. But I feel like even my son has helped her heal. You know what I mean? Because you look at both of them side by side, picture and my son, and they're identical, bro. That's like, beautiful, bro, because like, you might be able to give your brother, if, if it's just to say, I don't want to, like, overstep, like, what if your brother did reincarnate as your son? You were able to give your your brother and your son the life that he deserved the whole time yeah. because he spent so much time healing, trying to get better. You know what yeah. I mean? That's crazy. I think, yeah. I think that brings up a, a great point. We're all dads. Mm -hmm. Some of us in this room don't know if we're dads yet. <laughs> <laughs> Big Daddy Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop, there it is. <laughs> Dick swinging Dylan over there. <laughs> you know, Father's Day was a little iffy for, for Yo, Dylan. Just him and G Money, man. He didn't, he didn't know. Shout out G Money. Shout out G Money, man. <laughs> simply G Meals, simply G Dick. <laughs> but <laughs> to to touch up on, on that, because Chris, what you said is powerful, and what mm. you were saying it was super powerful. For the parents that are out there, again, having our first, when you have your first child, it's, that is a child that is teaching you lessons that you never knew you were going to go through. Mm -hmm. If you're having them in an early age or you're having them later on, it's all the same. You're learning how to be a parent. Mm -hmm. So you may not be perfect. You, f you may feel that, man, I, maybe I'm not a great dad, mm -hmm. but understand that. You're learning. You're learning how to be a parent. You're learning how how to teach this little one here to be to be human, right? Mm -hmm. Your your firstborn is your best friend because you're <coughs> learning. And man, sometimes if I could tell you, bro, I'm sorry, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if I would be able to tell my son and I know later on in age I can, hey, I'm sorry for going through these growing pains mm -hmm. with you. Right, but to my point, sometimes having our first kid, it may have not been the most perfect time, but I just knew my my life needed a saving, and God blessed me in this way, mm. and He saved my life by by bringing my son. Mm -hmm. It was not perfect. I don't think anybody that has has their first child son like, oh yeah, I planned it all. You know, I already knew it. Mm -hmm. Nah, bro. Sometimes it comes in moments where you're just like. One of your darkest moments of your life, and you have your born, and you're just like, damn, mm -hmm. thank you, son, for saving me. Mm -hmm. So now they carry, without them knowing, they're carrying a big responsibility mm -hmm. because my f my engine is fueled by you. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for you, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be you, mm -hmm. right? You're a dad too. You're a dad too. What what would you guys say is 
the meaning behind being a father? What's the feeling of being a dad? It's the ability to feel what unconditional love feels like. Mm. Before I had my children, my love was conditional. Mm. I love you because you do this for me. You make me feel special. Mm. You love me in ways that make me feel secure. Mm. My kids, I hate to say it, could go murder someone today. And I would still love them tomorrow. Mm. Because that's unconditional love. You can be whoever you want to be, even if I don't agree with that. And I'll wake up tomorrow the same way. I'll still pick you up. Mm. I'll still hug you. And I'll still kiss you. Mm. Because that's what it's about. Mm. Right? Like, you see parents leave their kids, and I don't understand that. Mm. I have my kids taken from me so that I understand how important it is to be there. Mm. And I don't think a lot of parents understand that because they're so engulfed in the journey. They see their kids every day. I don't, we, we, we talk about, we only see our kids sometimes on the weekends. We don't get that luxury. Yeah. So for me, it was realizing that there's a different side of love to life. Mm. And it's so unconditional that they could do anything that they wanted. Obviously, I want them to be great people, but they could do whatever they want. And I would still love them the same tomorrow. Mm. Uh, you're getting, I see, I already see it in your eyes, bro. And what it, what is one main thing that, having your daughter and son did for you? It unlocked the most powerful side of my brain, Mm. which was compassion. I was such a hard individual before I had my kids because I was a D1 athlete. I trained NFL football players for the NFL. I had to be hard, Mm. right? My daughter was born, and I learned how to love properly. Mm. I learned how to be patient. I learned that when she threw tantrums that I didn't get mad. I picked her up and kissed her. Mm. I told her that it was going to be okay. Mm. But the man before that wouldn't have done that. I would have yelled. I would have told you, no, you be hard. You, life isn't easy. Mm. You have to be this way. Mm. But they showed me a different side of love. And then now I'm able to spread that love throughout the world through the things that I get to do, mm. through videos, through talking with you guys, through spreading my light. I wasn't this guy before that. I wasn't this, like I said, it took so much violence to be this gentle. Mm. I was not this guy. Mm. And every day I will thank my kids for that. And when they get older, they get to say that they're proud of their dad because they're proud of the man that I became because of the ways that they helped me see myself. Mm. And I can never repay them for that. You know what I mean? I can never repay them for the things that they've done for me. And it helped me understand why my dad maybe fell short in a lot of ways that he did. Because I see how tough it is now. Mm. I see how unselfish it is to be a father. And I see that sometimes it's easier to take the route of less resistance because life is hard. Life is really hard, especially once you get past a certain age. It's easier to just sit down on the couch and watch TV after a hard day at work. Mm. It's hard hard to get up and play dolls with your daughter because I'm tired. Baby, Mm. don't you see that I'm tired? Mm. You don't see those things, huh? Because... You're not living my life, but I see that shit now, and I I can give grace to my dad, even though he wasn't the greatest dad. Mm, And so that's what also the gift that he gave me. If I forgave my dad for all the ways that he lacked, because I see how he could have been weak in those moments, and I but I choose not to do those things. Mm. So I'm better for it. Choices. Yeah, I I mean, I want to add to that. You know, I think, you know, one of the biggest things that I've seen, you know, with my children again, you know, is to understand how. You know, we all go through challenges in life, right? And I think as entrepreneurs, you it's a roller coaster, right? Yeah. I've been in situations where even though I'm living in, in, in my purpose and doing what I love, there's times where I was living paycheck to paycheck. You know, and my daughter coming up to me running, grabbing onto my leg would make me irritated. You know what I mean? Because in the back of my mind, it's not that, it's not what my daughter is doing. It's what I know I have on the back of my head that I still have to face. Yeah. And I have to look at my daughter and like know that I'm not, the best that or feel like I'm not the best that or feel like I'm not man enough to be able to provide for them and give them the life that I know that they deserve. Right. So being in situations like that has always taught me that, like, you know, your child is always going to teach you that it's never about, you know, how you're feeling in that specific moment, but it's through them what you evolve into. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's God's grace. If you really think about it. Right. It's like, hey, son, 
you know, you have your son, you have people to fight for, you have people to help you navigate through this entire journey, right? And, you know, there's a lot of times where I felt like I wasn't man enough, you know, that I wasn't worthy enough, that I wasn't enough just in general, you know, not being able to provide for my children and my family. But in those times, I also realized that the reason why I was able to get through those times was because of them. Mm -hmm. So their love for me, how he said, mm -hmm. unconditional, gave me enough energy that maybe if they weren't in my life, I probably would have just given up, you know. But since I had them, God's grace, I was able to navigate through that time. And now, you know, you have something to fight for and then you have someone to fight for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah, they're they are kids, man, whether they're three years old, 18, 20, they will never understand the full responsibility of being supportive, right? 100%. Maybe you don't need to show me you're doing it by being there, by seeing your smile, yeah. by seeing, by getting your hugs, your kisses. Yeah. You're doing so much for me that it's healing an internal side of me that never was put into perspective and never was spoken about because it it's as as man dog like fuck that i gotta keep going no matter what i gotta keep going no matter how fucked up this is i gotta keep going but then you get that hug hmm. and it's everything you hear those words daddy i love you even my one-year-old can't even understand what the hell she's saying besides no <laughs> and even hearing that i'm like man and then seeing the smiles, priceless mm -hmm. moments. Moments like that are just priceless. And when people become parents, whether you're a bonus parent, whether you're, ah, man, you'll understand that type of, mm -hmm. of love. Mm -hmm. you, under, under, you get to unlock, how you said, you get to unlock a side of you that, wow, Unconditional? Wow, what is it? Mm -hmm. Compassion? What? Patience? What? Because, yeah, like, you're with your siblings. Wow, oh, fuck, shut up. But, mm -hmm. like, even I think one time I, I got mad at, at, my, at my little man. And I, I, I just sounded off. And I was like, dude, stop. And, like, started crying. I'm like, fuck. Don't be this. Don't do this. So even now, taking a step back. Always on my phone, not spending enough time, not being there. You know, just I'm there, but not there. Mm -hmm. You all understand that. You're there with them, but you're working. Mm -hmm. I got to work. I got to mm -hmm. work. They don't give a fuck about you working. Mm -hmm. They don't give a fuck about how much money you're making. Mm -hmm. They don't care about where you're going or where you're going to be at. They just care, where's my dad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for us, dog, you guys too, man. You guys survived things that are so traumatic and life-changing, and y'all made it. Y'all are doing it, living in your purpose, living in your truth. And you guys are thriving in all areas. And one of the biggest areas that I see you guys thriving as my closest friends, man, like you guys are being amazing parents. Mm -hmm. That is where I know I'm so proud of both of y'all because mm -hmm. y'all are helping so many through the content. But y'all are teaching these little ones and showing them love and seeing their smiles. It's like. They have a great dad. Mm -hmm. Great moms. They got moms. Good. But I see my friends. I see my guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think, um, you know, kind of adding to that, I think it's one of the big one. How you say I do social media, right? So really? I do social media. Really? What's your handle? Social media guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't I don't just do it for myself, but I also do it for clients, right? And then there's times where it's my family time, but, you know, I post two or three times a day for my clients, right? Maybe one post needs some attention at a time where I'm supposed to be just a dad, yeah. right? But my client over here, you know, I, you know, switch up this or da-da-da, this and that, and it happens, right? And those are the key moments that sometimes, like, beat me up that's like, man, like, I sh this shouldn't even be coming up. Like, it should just be my quality time with, with my daughter, with my son, um, but a lot of times it takes a third person to be able to tell you, like, regardless of the areas in which you think you lack, you're being an amazing father. Yeah. Right. And 
you know, yesterday, uh, me and my kid's mom, we went out to dinner and we went out with another couple and we just started talking and we're talking, like, okay, what, what do you love about, you know, so-and-so, da 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 And the first thing that she said is like that he's an amazing dad, you know, and for me, I still feel that there's a lot of work to be done, me being a dad to my children, but the fact that she sees that on a third person perspective that I am doing a great job, like that gives me the sense of peace to know like, hey, it's never going to be perfect. Yeah. I can't beat myself up for it. It's only certain times that I go that I have to have to deal with these things. And every other time I always make it worthwhile. Right. Like yeah. if you see me on social media, like I'm always taking my kids to Disney, Legoland. Uh, I took my daughter to Europe, like things like that, because those are the moments and memories in which she's going to remember me. And those are the moments that I hope and pray the, is what she remem- remembers me for. Not the dad that's, that was on his phone because a client needed something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, hell yeah, man. It's, you know, it, it's, there's moments that are priceless, man. And once life keeps moving on, no matter what happens. So if you don't take advantage of where you're at right now, you lose, mm-hmm. you lose it. Mm-hmm. Never coming back. Not the same way. You may have a similar time or a similar situation again, but you can never redo it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think um, you know, one of the things that you were saying is that a lot of times, like, as men, we don't have these environments, right? And I think it's less of that we don't have these environments, but we just think that other men are going to see it as weakness. When in reality, real men are going to see that if you're willing to talk about the pain that you went through and you still survived... You're one tough motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it has nothing to do with anything else. It's like if you went through that emotionally, I think it's harder to go through something emotionally than it is physically. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you're able able to navigate through something that hurt you, destroyed you, took you to rock bottom, and you were able to survive, you're one of the strongest men that I know. It's an invisible disease. You know what I mean? So I I heard this. uh, I watched this video from Gary Vee, and he talked about an exercise that he does every single day for him to f- feel appreciation for his family. And every day he spends a few minutes thinking this is messed up, but thinking that his whole family dies in a car crash or mm-hmm. an airplane crash or I've whatever. That, yeah. And for in that moment, you get a sense of gratitude. I know you understand because you lost your brother. Mm-hmm. You get a sense of gratitude for having them there. Every yeah. morning you wake up, you get a chance and a choice. Mm-hmm. Every breath you take is a different choice and a chance to make something different. Mm-hmm. I wasn't the best dad the first couple of years of my life or my first couple of years of my kid's life because I was going to expos. I was caught up in the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I was doing that, the whole social media YouTube thing. Mm-hmm. And I had a choice and a chance when I woke up that I could make a difference today mm-hmm. in a way that I can be different than I was yesterday. Mm-hmm. I think that people get so caught up in their conditioning and the things that they're going through in their hamster wheel that they forget that they can change at any moment you decide to change. Mm-hmm. You know, when I lost all that weight, it's because I changed my conditioning and the way that I talked to myself. I didn't say, I think I can do this. I said, I am going to do this. Mm. And in that impeccable word that I spoke to myself, I was able to commit my, into myself in a way that I've never experienced before. Yeah. I signed that mental contract in my mind, mm. and I didn't want to break it. Mm. I was yeah. binded by my soul to mm. execute this plan. Mm. And it became because it was, I was impeccable with my word. It's like mm. uh, Kobe said, at the beginning of his season... He makes a contract with himself. Mm-hmm. If you break that contract with yourself, then who are you? As mm-hmm. a man, your word is your bond. Mm-hmm. If you break that promise you made to yourself, then what are you, what are you mm-hmm. really going to do? Like, this life, this world that we're in, it, it's it's the, the guys that wish upon it and the guys that are doing it. Mm-hmm. The guys that are, are saying they're going to do it and talk is big talk, and then the guys that are cited but are doing the work. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes the loudest person in the room is the one that's doing nothing. Mm-hmm. I don't need to say what the fuck that I'm part. doing. Mm. I'm doing my part. Mm. Whether you see it or not, I know where I'm going and I know what needs to be done. Mm. I don't need to be celebrated. I don't need to have all the applause around me because mm. I know what I need to do. Mm. I know what I'm meant to be doing and I know where I'm going. Mm. Like it or not. Yeah. Delayed gratification. I think that's one of the skills that if you're able to master, it would change your life completely in every area of your life. And it takes time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, It takes time, but it takes events in your life that are going to break you. Mm -hmm. Not the events that made you happy. It's going to take the times that fucking broke you, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. made you cry like like a little kid Mm -hmm. being old. In retrospect, also, like after those moments, 
knowing that little wins stack up, compounding interest yeah. mm. stacks up, me making my bed stacks up, me washing the dishes every day stacks up. Little wins every single day create bigger wins in the future. Yeah. I had to understand that because I was a messy person before. Mm. I had to rewire myself to be like, no, there's dishes in the sink, wash them. Have, mm. have some respect. Raise your standard of life. Mm. And then if man, raise your standard of life for what you're making. Mm. Now raise your standard of what your house looks like. Yeah. Raise your standard of how you're parenting your children. Mm. Everything started raising when I started feeling more worthy of a better life. Mm. Yeah. And that started with little wins. Yeah. I feel like that brings into the whole topic of like masculinity now, right? And the yeah. representation of that. It's like, agree 100%. It's like, if I know that, you know, I'm taking this time away from my kids and I'm promising that after this, I'm going to go and do that. And if I don't commit to that and now I can't get that result that I was promising them, then who am I as a man and as a father, mm -hmm. right? Does sharing your feelings and thoughts like we're doing now, if you're sharing them with your partner, do you think they look at you differently or they should look at you differently? It depends on the, on the person, I would say. Because I think, you know, for example, for me, my kid's mom, it's like I can talk to her and explain to her how I feel, but it will never change the way that she sees me because she knows who I really am, right? And, and a bigger scale of picture, right? Because yeah. we go through these emotional moments for short periods of time and then Back on. we navigate through them and we yeah. continue. Um, it, has to, it depends, right? I think um, if that person knows you well enough, she knows that you're just going through a season, in which you need that support from somebody in order for you to be able to vocalize it and just kind of be like a sounding board where it's like, hey, in my mind, I might be feeling this, but once I say it, now my brain registers a different in it and it's not what I was thinking, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just, it depends on the person, I would say. But I think in society, for what it's worth, the majority of girls would see you as you're weak. Mm -hmm. So I had to change my mindset when it comes to that. I had to stop thinking so much externally. Mm. And in thinking of how someone would judge me in a way of me being myself, mm. I decided I'm 100% be myself. If this is something that I believe and this is how I look at something, and if I say that, and if you respond differently in the way that, you, that I feel like is improper, then change seats. Mm. Damn. Vacate this, the premises. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is me 100%. I'm so comfortable with who I am now. I know I'm a fucking good man. And there's not nobody you'll ever meet that be like, Chris is a bad guy. Mm. Because I choose to show up in ways that I've chose to show up in rooms that nobody would have ever expected me to show up in, in the ways that I did. Mm. So when I'm myself and I decide to be myself, if you don't like that, vacate the premises. Mm. Like, this is who I am. If you don't support that, someone else will. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I am 100% in my shit now. Mm. I'm that dude to me. Mm. Yo, fuck what you think about me, yeah. right? And if my partner doesn't feel that way, somebody else will, mm. right? And that's what it is, man. I'm comfortable mm. with this right now. Yeah. And that's what a lot of heartbreak brought me to because mm. I was externalizing everything. Oh, well, this thing doesn't like me or this thing, these people on social media don't like me. That was shaping the way I was doing my content. Validation. Yeah. The comments were shaping my content until I sat down. I was like, no, this is, I want to save people's lives. Mm. I want to say something in a way that this dude doesn't want to kill himself today. Mm. And when I started doing that, living in my purpose, living in my truth, being who I wanted to be, that's when great things started happening. Mm. Yeah. And same thing in relationships. This, I show up exactly who I'm supposed to be because that's exactly who I am. Mm. And you don't like that. Tough shit, tough break. That sucks. But that's what it is. Mm. I'm, starting to, I'm starting to really live in truth now. I think it's acceptance. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the moment that you start accepting things for what they are, not what, for what they think they should be, that's when life just becomes beautiful. You know what I mean? Because it's like you start to realize that if something is hard, it's meant to be hard. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. things is meant to be beautiful, things are meant to be beautiful. And if they're not and you can't change it, that's completely okay. That's just not where you're supposed to be. Again, for everybody watching, listening, sharing, man, thank you guys because topics like, like these rooms, conversations like these need to be out there and heard. Not, not just for us because this is, like I tell everybody, like, bro, this is free therapy, bro. Mm. This is therapy. Mm -hmm. I hope it reaches who it needs to reach. Mm -hmm. I hope it re if you're listening to it right now, just know this message landed 
on your feed for you page, whether on whatever platform you're hearing and watching this, because you're going through something similar. Mm-hmm. And maybe not in the same situations, but you may be going through a season of change. Mm-hmm. Out of this whole episode today, it's about changing. Mm-hmm. It's about lies. Like, mm-hmm. this is a recap, once again, of we had episodes together on separate occasions, mm-hmm. and here we are recapping, meeting once again in a different moment of our life. Mm-hmm. Right, so that is it's amazing, man. I finally got to. You guys both live in the same city. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? This amazing we're guy. We, now, yeah, though. literally, bro. Yeah, like, we together. even off camera, we're like just wrapping it up. You yeah, know, yeah, for so, sure. So, yeah, you know how we do here. We're pretty, pretty famous on the making quotes, right? <laughs> Saying quotes. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're well known. So. <laughs> we're well known. You know, a couple, couple of videos here and there. Mm-hmm. Right now, in the in the stage in life, in the moment you are in life right now, what are the words that resonate with you that will help someone else that is listening to this? Never trust a naked person who offers a T-shirt. Meaning, never trust someone who says they love you if they don't love themselves. Mm. They don't have the capacity to share love with anybody else. Mm. That is a bar. <laughs> That was a bar. God, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, damn. Yeah, that was a yeah. bar. What you got? I think for me, you know, a lot of, uh, it comes with a lot of self-reflection, right? And I think it's, uh, I'm probably going to butcher it, but it's basically around the lines of like, if imagine if you were on your deathbed and you were to see the best version of you that you could have been. You know, for me, that's like, how many times do we not say, oh, tomorrow? How many times do we not say, oh, I'll start next week? How many times do we not say, hey, I'll do it at, you know, as a New Year resolution, right? But every single day you get to be the best version of yourself, and there's going to come a time and a place where you will no longer have that opportunity. Will you be happy with the results of the person that you were instead of the person that you could have been at the end when everything is said and done? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Looking at self-reflection. Yeah. That's well, huge. Yeah. Um, I think I could leave – Whoever is watching and listening, you are in the best season of your life, in the best moment of your life. No matter how cloudy, dark, lonely it is, these are pains that you're going through because you're about to hit the next chapter, the next level, and you're about to go through a moment that's going to change your life forever. Mm -hmm. So if you're struggling, if you're doubting yourself, hey, the self-talk, the I am Mm. I will, I can mm. be this. Keep telling yourself, keep reminding yourself, block out every negativity out there and keep on going. Yeah, it's part of the process. Like, I feel like don't ever think that because you're going through tough times, which if you take a step back and you analyze this whole episode, it's exactly that, right? If you're able to realize that through tough times is where great people are made, you will realize that these tests and these seasons that you're going through are meant to ultimately help you become the person that you want to be. And to kind of finish, but this is something Chris said a whole year ago, man. The best version of yourself is right outside of these doors. Mm-hmm. You just got to go through it. Mm. It's also a life podcast, baby. The most authentic, most organic, baby. Oh. Stay tuned. Yes, sir. Cheers.